Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 14 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. So in this video, we're going to look at actually controlling our hitbox so that it's only detecting collisions when we choose to hit a button to interact with something. So we're going to do this using um, two of our scripts primarily today, the walking controller and the player hitbox. But before we jump in there, I do want to go to our player hitbox object and I'm going to turn off the box collider. How I'm going to be controlling this um, hitbox is by enabling and disabling the actual collider component rather than the object itself. You could really do either but we already have in our player hitbox script a um, reference to the collider component so it's just as easy to do it that way. Let me quickly save the scene and now we can jump over to mono develop and we can take a look. Um, we'll start in our walking controller script. Now how we're going to tell our hitbox that it should activate the collider is through an event. Kind of like we did with the facing changes, I'm going to create a new delegate. Say public delegate void. I'm going to call this um, hitbox, oops, hitbox event handler. And this is not going to take any um, any parameters at this time. I'm also going to create a static event and this one is going to be called it's going to be a hitbox event handler and it's going to be called on interact. So when we hit our interact button uh, we're going to call this particular event. Now down in our Uh, read input here where we are setting our movement, we're setting our vertical jump. Now we can also put in down here uh, we'll say um, check if interact button is pressed. And so we have two more buttons still that we'd created. We have, um, I believe they're the Z and X button. Let's jump back over to Unity we go to our input manager, yeah, we see we have button one and button two here that we have set up. We'll call button one our interact button. So we'll jump back over to mono develop, and I'm going to actually copy this line right here because we're going to use that same idea. If our button is pressed, and we'll make sure that's button one now, not button zero, if that button is pressed, then we want to actually call that event that we created up here, this on interact. So we're going to say, we're going to check and say if on interact does not equal null, meaning so long as there's something inside of it, it's not just an empty um, event, then we can actually call on interact. And that's going to be similar to what we have down here. when we call our change facing. Um, same idea, calling the event, just double checking that it's not empty. So we're all set inside of our walking controller for now. Now we can jump back to our hitbox, and this is where we're gonna create a method that we're going to assign to that, um, assign to this on interact event, and it's going to turn on the collider for us and say, so that the collider can start looking around and seeing if there's anything that is intersecting with it. I am also going to quickly say, once we get our component here, um, I'm going to just quickly say um, collider.enabled equals false, so that if for some reason we did accidentally check off the collider in our scene, um, this will automatically turn it off again for us. Now in addition to that in here, I'm going to assign um, to this on interact. So in the same way that we did walking controller on facing change here, we're going to do walking controller on interact plus equals, and we need to create some kind of function that's going to actually um, turn on the collider. And I'm going to call that, I'm going to create that method down here, and it's going to be called void start collision check because what it's doing is it's turning on the collider so that it can start checking for a collision. This is not going to take any parameters for the time being. And all we're really going to say in here for right now is that the collider.enabled should equal true again. 
So that's going to turn on that collider so we can immediately and then for as long as we want start looking around and seeing if there's anything within the hitbox range that can be interacted with. Now we do need to somehow set, an, set a way so that this can turn itself off as well. We don't want to hit our interact button and then just be continually checking for interactions until the end of time. We probably only want it to be a very short amount of time, you know, maybe a tenth of a second or something like that. How we're going to do that is we're going to add a float up here. Let me create a float called duration. Actually, I'm going to move that because I'm going to keep these things. These are for um, collider movement. And then I'm going to create another thing here called collider duration and I'll paste that float duration here and that is going to be kind of like a little mini timer that we have inside of our hitbox so how we're going to actually set that is basically we're going to say when we do the start collision check we're going to set duration to be a certain amount of time and then every single frame will reduce that time until it hits zero at which point we'll just turn off the collider again so we're going to put in a float parameter into here. I'm going to call this float dur for duration. And then after we enable our collider, we're also going to say duration equals that float value. And now we're also going to create an update function in here. Say so void update. And all this update function is going to do for us right now is it's going to check and see, is the collider on? If so, reduce the duration. And if the duration is zero, turn off that collider. So we'll say that like this. We're going to say if collider.enabled, so if it's enabled that will return true, then duration minus equals time dot delta time. So we reduce that by one frame's worth of time. And then we'll say at this point if duration is less than or equal to zero, not 90, zero, then we can actually disable that collider again. So we've got this kind of solved, but we have a problem here now because we've got our start collision check that takes a float. However, we're going to be assigning that up here. And be sure to assign that to your on interact. I kind of walked away from that a little bit. Um, Sign that up there. You don't need to put any parentheses or anything because you're just using the actual um, the actual method is being passed in. But the problem is that on interact, if you recall, doesn't have any parameters. We go back here, we see that on interact is a hitbox event handler which doesn't have any um, parameters inside of it. So we need to fix that. We need to say hitbox event handler should have a float inside of it. So we're going to put in a float. We'll call it duration or just dir again, that is fine. And so now we're kind of making this promise that, oh, if we call this hitbox, if we call a hitbox event handler, it's gonna have a float in it to let you know how long the hitbox should be active. We also, however, that means we need to pass in something down here in our on interact. We need some kind of duration goes here. So let's create a public setting. I'm gonna call this public float interact duration and I'll set it to like 0 0.1 tenth of a second seems like it'll be a good number there um why is that oh just weirdness of the program okay yeah that's fine so yeah we've got our public float here and then down here where our duration goes after on interact we can pass in interact duration so now when we hit our interact button, we're both telling the collider to be activated, but we're also kind of setting this mini timer to say, once this timer hits zero, if you haven't hit anything, deactivate yourself again. So if we jump back over to Unity, we should now see, we can go to our player hitbox here, hit play, and we can walk around as normal, and you'll notice that if you look at the outline here, you can just barely see it, but it is still moving, it's just, it's faded out because it's, the collider isn't active right now. However, once I hit the Z button, it briefly flashes there, and that is the tenth of a second that that um, hitbox is active, and that's the time that our hitbox is actually actively looking to see if there's something 
inside of it that can be hit. So in our next video, we're actually going to look in there, detect, see if something is being hit, and if so, actually interact with it. So that'll be the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.